<laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Ah, we are here. It's an anniversary celebration at Elan Vital's Art World, the first year. And what a year it's been. <laughs> they yeah. said it couldn't be done, and uh, Alan has done it. This is the largest art gallery in the Pacific, over 8,000 square feet. It's absolutely full of gems, gem works, beautiful, beautiful works of art that Alain Vital has created. When you started a year ago, we came and talked to you, and it was a great party, and people went, how could you have a place? How could there be a place that is this large and in Makawao? And you had a dream, and you had a vision, and I just want to say, boy, Alain, congratulations. You did it through one year, and you did it in style, and you were really successful doing it. How does it feel? Of course it feels great. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's part of a long-term dream that's come, coming true. I mean, basically, um, Makawao is the art colony of the Pacific. This is where all the artists reside. The greatest number of artists in Hawaii, and therefore the Pacific Rim, live right here within a few miles of this epicenter of creation. But you were really the first artist who decided that you really wanted to go for it. I mean, full blast, really go for it and have this huge, wonderful world of art. And so it was a very big dream. It was a very grandiose dream. <laughs> well, it, the atmosphere was away. right. I yeah. mean, the people are right. Uh, there were people who laid down cornerstones before I did, you know, and the community was pretty much in place, but it needed, you know, uh, uh, an anchoring mm. post. Well, of course, uh, Alon, you've been on the islands for years, uh, 20 years, has it been? Well, it's 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. So you've seen in 11 years a lot of people that were struggling artists surviving, and some of them kind of going, oh, can you really do it? Can you make it here, you know? And you just decided to take it to the next level and really decide to not only make this a landmark space as far as the amount of space you have, but to also be able to say, hey, I'm gonna make this a studio gallery so I can work here, make this my space, and divide it into about three levels of this dream that you're gonna create here in the space, right? Well, uh, really, it's still growing, so I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I have a basic idea of what it wants to be at this time. Uh, I know that this is the end of the first year, so it's at the toddler stage, and mm -hmm. it's starting to run. You know, at least I know I made it past the critical period. And in Hawaii, one year anniversary means that the baby is alive, because usually that's when the attrition rate occurs. So this is very much in Hawaiian tradition, too, that there's one year anniversary. How did you juggle being able still to have this business, which is in its infancy, one year, a baby growing, and to be able to still create your artwork, and on top of that, now you have another location you have on the mainland you opened up. I mean, that is incredible. How, how did you juggle all of this? Well, it's a lot of energy and a lot of will. I mean, I believe that the work is the love that I have to give, and it does go out there and make people feel better, and it helps their lives. So I have a mission, I have a meaning in my life, and that helps me through this all. You know, people can accomplish a lot of things if they have a meaning in what they want to do, if, if, you know, they know that that's, you know, what their destiny is. So you really had a belief, a total commitment to the belief of that dream? Yeah, well, also, I've had, uh, uh, you know, help from cl friends close by and also uh, the spirits. Mm. You know, the spirits have been there for me. They've directed me, and I've listened, and uh, basically, I'm serving. How do you capture that in your work, that energy, that spirit that you listen to? How do you try to capture this amazing magic that makes your work so vital, that is Alain Vital, the vital, the vitality of this life force that you have? How do you go about doing that? It really has to do with light. Gemstones put out light. They put out light once it goes into them. But the reason why they're so brilliant is that the light passes through mm. and then picks up their own essence and comes back to us. Mm. So we look at them with marvel. Uh, so it really and people radiates. Say, yeah, it radiates. And people say that, there's a, a, that a stone has fire. 
a stone has uh, energy, and, and, and when I say people, I mean gemologists as well. So this energy that comes out from them, that's in the form of process light going into its body, coming back out. So I wanted to plagiarize nature in the production of gemstones. So it needs a thickness, a density for the light to pass through the stone, because there's never beauty on the surface. That's the other metaphor. So like the light goes into them, comes back out, in the, in, it's processed through their, the color of the stone. You have this wonderful gold energy, this beautiful gold light in your paintings that you capture. And it has, you look at the painting, it comes alive, it moves, it actually moves with the energy of that beautiful gold. Tell me about how you use the gold to, to kind of make the painting move with you. Well, there's gold and other colors which actually cause things called sheens. Like there's gray and then there's silver. Silver has a sheen, gray doesn't. Hmm. So when I use colors, I don't, like, like for instance, yellow. I don't use yellow in my paintings, I use gold. Mm. I don't use gray, I use silver. Mm. I don't use black, I use uh, graphite or carbon. Mm. You know, they are real uh, essences of themselves and their quality of the pigments are quite different than store-bought. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I understand the way that they move uh, and I place them in proximity to one another knowing how they're going to relate to one another because I have observed their relation before, you mm. know, whether one dominates, one repels, one um, mixes. I can know this before I place them in proximity. Like if you know if a, you put a friend next to someone who uh, you know they won't like, they're going to go the opposite way. But mm. if you put them next to someone they like, you know they'll move closer. Like a magnet, how the magnetism of the energy, right? right? Yeah. Repel or, or attract. Yeah. So do you know? Can you tell who's going to love your artwork? Can you tell the kind of person that that loves this art and falls in love with it and has to have it? Well, that's a really good question because it took me a while to be able to understand who is really my patron. Mm -hmm. Many people love the work, but people may not be able to afford it. Uh, but really, what the, my, my patron, the one thing I have seen about my patron is they know who they are. Mm. They have a sense of self. They don't follow uh, the group. Mm. They don't.